Product research is the most important part of the entire Amazon FBA private label business model. It is the single determining factor that will make or break the success of your business. However, using different methods to find potential products is just half the battle. How you analyze the data is what ultimately matters as it's how you will make your decision on whether to move forward with a product or not. And this is where most beginners stumble. In this video, I'll show you how to properly analyze the data so that you can make the best informed decision after you've already found a potential product. But first, my name is Crescent, and if this is our first time meeting, welcome to my channel. My passion is sharing tips and strategies on how you can create a successful Amazon FBA private label business. So if you enjoy videos like this, or especially if you've been around my channel, consider subscribing. All right, let's get started. So once you've found a product, you need to analyze the data. So let's use my favorite example, a can opener. And this is gonna pull up a list of products on Amazon, which are obviously can openers. And we need a tool to analyze the market with. And I'm using Amazescout. And what this does is it pulls up all the information that I need to quickly and easily analyze the data at a glance. So it's pulled up the listings in their organically ranked order here and all the data that I need, for example, their sales rank, their price, the FBA fees, how many sales they're doing each month, including the revenue and the number of reviews that they have. Okay. Now, the first thing you want to do when you're analyzing niches is to make sure that you're using the correct keywords for the niche. You want the shortest and most relevant keywords when you're analyzing it. Otherwise you can get inaccurate data. For example, I used can opener here for this niche and you can see that the reviews here, which is what we're going to gauge competition on is super competitive. 5,600, 5,700, 1,400, 2,000, right? You can see here, it's really competitive. Now, if I were to use a different keyword phrase, let's just say I chose, um, stainless steel can opener instead. Okay. You'll notice that it pulls up the same list of products. They're all can openers as well. And this is where beginners will get in trouble. So if I were to pull up the Chrome extension again, you'll now notice the number of reviews is far less, right? So in this example, the can opener, obviously it's still way too competitive. But in other niches, when you're doing product research, it can be the difference between a too competitive niche versus one that's all of a sudden not competitive. And if you decide to go forward with a product, you'll get yourself in trouble because you actually use the incorrect keyword. So it's very important that you choose the correct keyword when you're analyzing niches. All right. Now going back to just can opener, you'll notice here in the Chrome extension, it's pulled up a lot of data. A lot of beginners will rely on the data that is displayed at the top of the window here. And this is a summary of the results. And I don't recommend using the data that's up here. Only use it as a reference. Most importantly is the potential score or opportunity score as some tools will call it. And they'll use this solely as a decider whether or not it's a good product or not. This is a bad idea. Okay. This number should be used just as a reference to give you a quick glance of where this product is standing. All right. And this one shows a five. So, I still want to analyze the data. The data never lies. It's going to tell you whether it's good or not, or whether or not you should proceed or not. Okay. And more importantly, you don't want to use the average reviews and the average price or the average sales, monthly sales right here. All right. The average is taking an average of everything that's listed on that page. And the problem with using an average is that a few listings that have very high or very low numbers will throw the entire average off. You really want is the median number. Okay. And since that number isn't offered, you got to look with your own eyes and take a look. So for example, this one shows the average monthly sales is 32, uh, 3,200. And if we come here to the estimated sales, you can kind of look through the top 10 or top 12 or so and take a guess yourself and get a rough estimate of what you think it, it is. Most people are looking for around 300, 200, 250 to 300 sales per month. So you want to look and see if the majority of the listings here are doing at least 250 to 300 units per month. 
don't just use the average here, all right? So obviously this meets that criteria of 250 or 300 a month, right? Same with the average price. You wanna make sure that the price point is at least $15 and up. Otherwise, the FBA fees is gonna take up all of the profits and you're not gonna be making any money. So you wanna look at the price column here and with your own eyes, again, look and make sure that the majority of the listings are selling at $15 and up. Don't just use the average because one or two listings that have a very high price will increase that average artificially, which will throw the numbers off, okay? So obviously in this column, the majority of them are over $15, right? So that passes. Same with the reviews. You wanna make sure that at least seven of the top 10 listings have less than 75 reviews, otherwise the niche is considered too competitive. And again, in this example, the, it obviously doesn't pass because this is just my favorite example of a can opener, but you wanna actually count, not just use the average reviews, count through the top 10 if at least seven have less than 75 reviews. Another issue here is I see a lot of people posting screenshots to get second opinions on their niches, but they've sorted the list by some other factors, such as the monthly revenue or the monthly sales volume, and you don't wanna do this. You wanna analyze niches based on their organically ranked positions. So you can see here that the listing here is sorted in the same order that they would show up in Amazon, okay? And the, other than the sponsored listings here, these ignore these ones that say sponsored, ignore those. They're only there because they're ads, not because they're organically placed there, all right? So for example, this is the Xylist, Lock and Lift, and then Hamilton Beach, KitchenAid. These guys are organically placed first, second, third, all right? Now if we pull up the Chrome extension again, you'll see it's in that same order, Xylist, Hamilton, KitchenAid, all right? You wanna analyze niches in this order, why? because you're gonna be competing with these listings in that order. You want your listing to be on, on the first page. So you wanna see these listings that are on the first page and what order they are, so you can make a decision on how to get yourself placed in that position, okay? So don't sort the list in any other way other than their organically ranked positions. Next, it's very important that you remove or at least ignore those sponsored ads I just mentioned. So for example here, I've already filtered them out. But if I were to go over here and turn off the filter, you can see here it says hide sponsors, okay? So if I uncheck it, or I just turn the filter off, you'll see now that the sponsored listings are listed here, okay? Now, the problem is with that is now the data, if I were to take, for example, the competition, seven of the top 10 to have less than 75 reviews, and I didn't ignore these sponsored ads, it's gonna throw off my data analysis, all right? The sponsor listings are only there because someone had bid on them and they're there because they're ads, not because they got there organically, okay? So always ignore the sponsored listings or better yet, remove them with a filter, all right? They're hidden completely. Now, as you do product research, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. You'll be able to see all these data points at a glance, all right? It'll become second nature, so for me, when I pull up this Chrome extension, I'm looking at all of this stuff all at once and I'm seeing it in just one big picture, all right? So once I've determined the price point, the competition, the next thing I wanna see is whether or not it's brand dominated. And a brand dominated niche is when there's a seller that's taken up three or more listings in the top of the first page. For an example, in this niche, I can see that Hamilton Beach shows up multiple times. So does Enseco here, Oxo, all right? So this one is obviously a brand dominated niche and it's compounded even worse that these are major corporations. You don't wanna compete with major brands because they have unlimited ad budgets, all right? So even Cuisinart's in here, KitchenAid, okay? So make sure it's not brand dominated and you should be able to see that at a glance. Next, I'm looking for market saturation. What does that mean? That means is, is there an influx of new sellers coming into this niche? If there is, then I'd be worried that in the next few months, if I were to launch this product as well, I'm gonna be competing with a whole bunch of new sellers, meaning this niche is on the radar with other people, so I might want to avoid it. 
okay? And a quick way to tell, which the Amaze Scout tool is very handy at doing, is that it shows you the available from column right here is the age of these listings. All right, so at a glance, I can kind of see how old these listings are. And right away, I can see here from 10 through 15, there's a whole bunch of new sellers, okay, from 2018. Um, so this is a mixed batch here. There, it's new and old, and obviously can openers have been around for a while, so these, are, these just happen to be new listings. So in my opinion, either this electric one is something new, and so a lot of people are coming in to sell this new electric can opener, or the niche has become more and more popular, so there's a lot of new sellers jumping in on it, all right? So you wanna analyze the niche to make sure if it's a new product, you're gonna to expect to see new sellers. But if it's an existing niche that's been around for a while or an existing product that's been around for a while and you see a whole bunch of new sellers, then I would be a lot more careful because it obviously got on the radar and there could potentially be a lot of new sellers jumping in. So you might not want to do the same. Now, another data point you want to check is to make sure a product isn't seasonal, meaning it sells particularly well only one time during the year, such as Christmas items or Valentine's Day or Easter, okay? And a quick way to tell, and what's great about a Scout is it puts these tools right at your fingertips. You don't have to jump around from a different website to website or tool to tool to find this information. So for example, for this niche, I can look up real quick if I click on trends, it's gonna pull up Google Trends for me and I can see right away if it's seasonal or not. And in this case, it definitely sells better right around November, December for Christmas. Now something like this, I wouldn't consider seasonal because it's obviously a kitchen item and people use can openers year round. And this hump you're seeing here every year is just because during the holiday season, people are buying it during Black Friday and Christmas. So it's something probably that's easily giftable, right? So you're seeing these humps and the rest of the year is pretty solid. Now, if it was something like a pool noodle or a Christmas tree lights or something, then I'd be worried if I see this repeated hump every year because those would be an indication that it's a seasonal product. So again, this is right at your fingertips. Just click trends and it'll pull that data up. And now, most importantly, when you're looking at a niche, you wanna be able to know and make a quick estimate of how much money you can actually make if you were to get in on this product. And that's the profit margin. The whole point of you doing this business is to make money. So again, if the price point is at least $15, and you've determined that it passes all the other criteria, you'll want to, at a quick glance, see how much profit you can actually make. And again, here it's showing you the price point and the fees and the net margin, but it's not telling you what the actual profit margin per unit is because it doesn't know what your unit cost is. So how do you get a quick estimate for the unit cost? Well, that's to jump on Alibaba. And again, this tool makes it quick and easy. So for example, if I wanted to do a can opener that was uh, this kind of style one, then I can just choose this listing, click the arrow here and pull up find at Alibaba. And it's gonna quickly and easily pull this right up for me. I don't have to do a search. And I can see at a glance that these are the product that I wanna sell. And I can look right here and see an estimate of what the unit cost is gonna be because these are all the suppliers on Alibaba that make this product. So I can see that this one is selling between 88 cents and $1.19 each. Um, this one's 60 cents to a dollar. And I kind of scroll down and get a good look at these and see what the average price is. So they're looking to be around a dollar, a dollar thirty. Dollar sixty, dollar thirty. Two dollars, one to three dollars. So I can take a rough guess here that it's probably gonna cost me around a dollar to a dollar 50 each per, or here's one for 72 cents, okay? So let's just say a dollar 50 each, right? So quickly I can go back now and use the FBA calculator, which is built into the tool, which makes it super handy. Once I click it, it already knows what tier that this product falls in based on its size and weight from the listing, which is super convenient. So it's able to tell me what the fees are. So I don't have to type any of that stuff in or look it up. And it pulled up the price that that seller has it for. And I can put in here that it cost me $1.50. Plus let's just say the shipping also costs $1.50. That's a good way to estimate it is just to double it. So we'll say the whole unit cost is $3. Okay, and just by typing that in, 
I can see that my profit per unit right away is $4.83. So it's super convenient, really quick, I can get a good ballpark of where I'm sitting. And again, the minimum profit margin that I recommend is at least $5 a unit. So this is pretty close, okay? Anything less than that might not be worth your time. All right, so as you can see, Amazecout is a super convenient tool that makes product research a lot easier, putting all the tools that you need at your fingertips. So if you're interested in trying out Amazecout, I'll put a link in the description. And I also reached out to Amazecout and I got a $20 discount for my community. And again, it's through that link. So if you do decide to upgrade, there's a $20 coupon for you to use. Okay, and lastly, which is beyond the scope of this video, is to make sure that the product isn't patented, trademarked, or copyrighted, all right? So there's no way to do that through any tools. So the last step then is if it passes all of the criteria when you're analyzing each niche, is to make sure that it's not patented. And you can do that by going to patents.google.com or on the US Patents and Trademarks website at uspto.gov. And I have an actual video that discusses this in detail, which I'll leave a link to right here. Let me know in the comments what you find the most difficult about doing product research. And if you had a wish list, what would make it easier for you? All right, thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, you know what to do. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. And to make sure you never miss a video, click that bell icon to turn on notifications. There's also a link in the description to our community forums, which you should totally join. And if you're looking for more tips and strategy videos, click or tap over here. And as always, thanks for watching.